6500 series is the flagship platform in Cisco's Catalyst line of Ethernet switches. It's the only platform that delivers industry-leading innovation in every aspect of the network. This means that one platform that can be deployed in a campus core, distribution and access layers, in the data center, on the way on edge, and even for Metro Ethernet. Hi, I'm Jennifer Geisler, and today we're looking at the Catalyst 6509E. As you might have noticed, the 09 means that it has nine slots. It stands 15 rack units tall and is the most commonly used chassis in the family. Most of the time, initial configurations have two to three empty slots for future expansion. Like all Catalyst 6500 chassis, it supports redundant supervisor engines. When it's configured with a single supervisor, that second slot can be used by a line card. Now, as you may know, the Catalyst 6500 was introduced in 1999 and has several generations of supervisor engines and line cards. The E-Series chassis are compatible with all currently shipping supervisor engines. The Virtual Switching Supervisor 720 10 gig, Supervisor Engine 720, and Supervisor Engine 32 with and without PISA. The backplane of the 6509E supports two different technologies for connecting the line cards with the supervisor engines. First, there are connections directly into the integrated fabric on the virtual switching supervisor 720 10 gig and supervisor engine 720. These supervisors can support up to 40 gigabits per second per line card. But the 6509Es will actually scale up to 80 gigabits per second per slot when the next generation of supervisors is available. The 6509E has a 32 gigabit per second shared bus. The supervisor engines with integrated fabrics can use both the fabric connections and the shared bus at the same time. If you look at the supervisor engine 32, you'll find that it offers all the same features and services as the fabric enabled supervisors. However, SUV32 is designed with performance levels for the wiring closets and the WAN edge, so it only uses the 32 gigabit per second shared bus. The 6509E can support all the line cards and service modules for the Catalyst 6500 family. As you can see here, it can support up to 130 ports of 10 gigabit ethernet. And when it's configured as a virtual switching system, the system can support up to 260 ports of 10 gigabit ethernet. Combined with its extensive offerings of gigabit ethernet cards, it's the ideal platform for migrating from gigabit to 10 gigabit and beyond. Now, you may be saying to yourself, sure, the chassis can support all the different line cards, but what about the software? The 6509E is supported in both iOS and Catalyst OS. And if you need help figuring out the minimal level of software required for your configuration, there's a tool on Cisco.com called the Software Advisor. That can be very helpful. The power supplies for the 6509E are below the line cards. While only one is required for operation, there are slots for two. They are hot swappable. It can run either redundant or in combined mode. The power supplies for the 6509E starts at 2,500 watts and go all the way up to 8,700 watts for dense power over ethernet deployments. They are available for both AC and DC and can be mixed and matched as needed. Now it's worth noting here that the power supplies will only consume as much power as your specific configuration requires. If you'd like to figure out how much power a given configuration will require, you can go to the Cisco Power Calculator at tools.cisco.com slash CPC. Last and possibly least, there's a single fan tray to the left of the modules. It provides side-to-side -side cooling and is hot swappable, so it can be replaced while the switch is in operation. That's a quick look at the Cisco Catalyst 6509E. For more information, please go to cisco.com slash go slash 6500. Thanks for watching.